They look like an ordinary PC, but after many weeks and a lengthy managerial approval process to get the money, we, or should I say Roger, Mr. Roger Chang, have completed the Hackintosh you voted for. Let's cut to the chase. What's a Hackintosh? Hackintosh, essentially you are building a Macintosh using PC parts uh, and, they're, and, and thereby having a machine that wasn't built by Apple. Why, that runs why, would OS you do, 10. why would you do that? Why wouldn't you? Because it's mean, like 18 times less expensive than buying a freaking well, Mac part of tower. part of it is Apple has a very interesting product lineup that doesn't include a full size desktop machine right. uh, that doesn't come under uh, a low enough budget. So, if you wanted something like a, a low end to mid range desktop, you would have to pick up an iMac. And not everyone would want an iMac because they want to pick out their own screens, right. or they have a keyboard or, or some other peripheral setup, and then they don't want to spend the two plus grand on a Mac Pro. Right. Uh, Mac Pros are expensive. They're very expensive, and they lovely come, case. Lovely case comes with a very expensive hardware inside mm -hmm. as well. I mean, they're all server parts inside. So with a with a Hackintosh, essentially what you're doing is is like, hey Apple, I love your product, I love your OS. I'm just going to build all the parts f off Newegg or something, and then you know, essentially buy a legal, completely legal version this, of OS 10. Yes, this as you can see right now, I'll show everyone the desktop. We can get a scan of the desktop. Uh, this is OS 10 running right now. This has all the functions in it. If I go to about this Mac and uh, I do more info. It has everything that you would find in an OS 10 machine. In fact, this is running a legit copy of OS 10 Snow Leopard. It's kind of funny. The, the hardware side of things is really easy. Tony Mac x86, read yes. the list. In fact, uh, Tony Mac, and this is, the, this is the one thing that's very important about building a Hackintosh. The parts you pick are very important and solely for the reason for driver support. If, yeah, if you don't pick the parts that Apple supports, your features won't work. And uh, Tony Mac x86 is a great site if you've never uh, done a, a Hackintosh. They actually, he actually includes uh, several builds for various uh, 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 Mac, or I should say Hackintoshes. Let me see. So for in this case, he does, a, he does what they call a custom Mac build, where he mm. isolates certain components. You know, certain things will be in common. For example, almost all the motherboards he selects are gigabyte right. boards because they have driver support. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go with another model. And in fact, a couple of our uh, coworkers use Asus boards, mm -hmm. and they've used them actually in many respects were actually a lot easier to set up <laughs> than this board. But once you pick up the parts, um, you assemble it as you would a normal PC, right. and really the biggest uh, uh, process is getting the software installed. Now, because Macs uh, boot up from an EFI and not a BIOS, right. you actually have to emulate that EFI or the extensible firmware uh, interface, and you do that by loading the emulated version onto the hard drive. So when it boots up, it sees that, thinks it's a Mac, and then loads OS X. It's kind of a, a bunch of people have already tweeted and you know, kind of talked about the hack test. Look, you guys aren't using EFI-X, are you? They're evil. Oh, you don't really need to use EFIX, and of course there's a lot of controversy about them. Now, for those who don't know, EFIX was a company, or still is a company in Taiwan, that sold a USB dongle mm -hmm. that had essentially that open, a lot of people allege open source content. Right and repackaged it and sold it for like 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And essentially this is the same process except you're not booting from a USB thumb drive, you're just booting from the hard drive uh, with, cool. with the entire process. Now, um, in fact, let me do this. I am going to restart the machine. Okay. Let's do this. Drop this in here. Close the drive. I, no, don't touch. Don't touch. Uh, it's going to reboot. It's going to reboot. CD-ROM. Now, essentially, what I'm going to do is what they call the iBoot multi-beast hack <laughs> in Tosh. And the iBoot is essentially is an ISO that you burn out that be essentially emulates the EFI bootloader right. on a CD-ROM. And once it loads, as you can see, it's doing the little spin right now. Um, it allows you to essentially take that, swap out. Once you load it, you swap it out, and you replace it you replace that CD with your legit copy of Snow Leopard. As you can see right here on the screen, Ooh. I have iBoot, Techintosh, which is the Mac, and of course these two are the uh, partitions on the second hard drive, which eventually I might put Windows on. So right now I just rebooted because going through the iBoot process takes a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very simple. Once you do it, you install it as you would normal OS X. Now once you get it... And we should put it, the iBoot process is the initial installation, yes. not every time you reboot the machine, just yes. when you install OS X. Yes. Now and, and it's very important because once you do that, it allows you to boot back in. Once you reboot, you still actually have to boot with the iBoot. Mm -hmm. After you install OS X, 
you do the uh, you you need to have a couple of things. Now, one is the update helper. Now, you can get this, all these files from uh, Tony Mac x86. Need the update helper that gives you a link to a essentially a service pack update right. for OS 10. And if you want to install this first, because I did this and it, I spent 12 hours pulling my hair out. Uh, you do this first. You do the you do the uh, uh, the service pack update, which they call like the uh, something build. Um, <laughs> And then you, you reboot again, uh, and then you go into what they call the multi-beast. Now, the multi-beast essentially is the bootloader. Right. Not the mo it isn't the bootloader. It installs the bootloader. And what this allows you to do is to go through and select the various aspects of your machine that you've put together. I'm going to keep continuing. Yeah, 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 I agree. Uh, that means the various drivers, network support, a lot of things that you have to check off. The best way to do that, though, is with the DSDT, mm -hmm. and that is essentially a script that preloads all the various aspects for your motherboard and your, your hardware. And it's great because also Tony Mac uh, uh, carries this as well. Users put these together and then they say, well, you know what, I have this gigabyte board, I have all these things, this is what I did, I'm gonna save it out, put it into this file. So essentially, you if you pick something from the Tony Mac build recommendation, mm -hmm. all this stuff is already in there. Cool. So you just need to point to it. Uh, for example, I would go to user DSDT install, Make sure that file, that DSDT uh, file, is on the desktop, mm -hmm. and it automatically uh, finds it, picks it up. But you also want to make sure you do a couple of things. You want to make sure that you have a bootla uh, the Chimera bootloader, and of course, the various other customizations, including network support and video. Now I'm a little confused. Do I need the iBoot ISO every time I restart the machine? No, you only need it twice. One to install OS 10. Mm -hmm. The second time to get into your install okay. OS 10 and then be able to do all this. Now, once this is all done, when, once multi-beast is done, it should put what's on this disk onto the hard drive. And so the next, done. you're done. And, like once you, and once you're done, it boots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. If you follow what they, they've selected, this is actually a very painless process. And if you follow the instructions, believe me, I, I printed out more, more than my fair share of instructions. If what happens if you don't follow the instructions, Roger? Well, then you have two other people who built Hackintosh's help, and you're still standing around five hours later trying to figure out why it won't boot. RTFM. Uh, yes, and I, 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 I and it's, it, it's, I can't stress this enough. The Tony Mac x86 site actually makes it a very, very straightforward process. Mm -hmm. You do want to follow a couple of steps. They do miss out a few things, which is in the multi-beast, which is basically including the network uh, as well as the video. But once you do and you reboot and you come up to a, a, a screen that looks like this, I mean, so when I redid this from scratch, I, I, I timed myself from start to finish doing a clean install. It took about uh, maybe two hours just basically waiting for all this stuff to load and reinstall. And then you had a low-cost, high-performance Hackintosh machine for the Texilla site. And you can still do normal software updates. I like it. And it works great, it's fast. Uh, I don't have Firewire, but I can add that later. But again, it's, it's super cheap. Uh, the only thing I would do differently next time around mm -hmm. is to buy a bigger case, because the case they actually pick out for you is a little cramped. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roger Chang, thank you, sir. Sure.